Today I'm showing you two pairs of jeggings. You can make them with a lot of details or very simple. It's up to you. The fit is amazing. It's a really great style that works all year round, really. Sneak peek of a little detail right there. Stay tuned. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from LiftingPinsAndNeedles.com. Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing, limitless sewing, and I'm excited today to show you some bottoms. I haven't sewn pants or knit pants in a little while and I do like sewing them. I always enjoy sewing a pair of bottoms, especially when I have really high hopes for the feet and the style. I have been looking for a pattern like this for a long time and I've actually been buying fabric to make bottoms like this. And when I saw the test core, I was very, very excited knowing that I was gonna have a great result. These are the Vienna jeggings from Sinclair Patterns. And you can see the line out here. It is a style that is fitted, fitted at the waist, fitted at the hips, at the thighs and the ankles. They are jeggings. So that means that they look like jeans, but they're not made out of denim. They are made out of stretchy material. So it's super, super comfortable. They have quite a lot of options here for you to pick, mix and match and sew them in the way that you want them to be. There are two types of waistband. One that is just a little narrower and straight. It is actually a rectangle and you thread an elastic through there. I think if the difference between your waist and your hips isn't that big, the rectangle waistband will be fine for you with an elastic and will actually help you keep your pants up. The other option the pattern calls a yoga waistband. It is a curved waistband, contoured waistband. It follows that shape and there's an inner waistband and an outer waistband, very similar to what you sew onto leggings. That is my preference. I always like those types of waistbands the best. They seem to fit better on my body. If you have more of an hourglass or pear shape where your waist is much smaller than the hips, in my opinion, I think a curved waistband always fits really nice. You can put an elastic on the top of that curved waistband, a thin elastic, and you can sew it on the seam to help with keeping that nice and stable. Now down below in the front leg, you can choose to do a fake fly or not. That is totally optional. It's totally fake. You can do it or not. Also, you can choose to cut pieces from the front leg to make a moto panel, which I think is really cool. You take a piece of fabric and create pin tags and then you cut out your moto panel and sew it in there. Underneath that moto panel on the thigh, there are knee patches. It's an imitation to moto panel. And of course this is not functional it's just for looks so that is an option that you can do on the front leg there's also a fake little pocket on the top like you're gonna put your hands in your pockets but it's fake so if you choose to do that you have quite a lot of pattern pieces to make the front legs but then you can opt to not do any of these details and just have your normal front leg with a little pocket on the top and that makes it much more simple at the back you have a yoke and you have patch pockets which are also optional so you can choose to do the yoke or not or the pockets or not it's up to you all these pieces the yoke the moto patches the knee pads all of that are just for looks they don't have fitting features in there so if you don't sew them the jeggings are going to fit in the exact same way than if you do sew them so it's all decorative. Because I was planning to make two pairs, I plan to make one with all the details so I can show you how to put that together and then make another pair that is a little more simple. In my opinion, if you were going to use a knit that had a print that was busy or something, I wouldn't go through the trouble of sewing the details like the moto patch or even the yoke in the pockets because no one's going to see them. You know, they're gonna fit fine if you just make them really simple and then it would be a super, super fast project for you to whip up if you're using a print. If you're doing a solid, then I would go ahead and try all these details because then you can actually see them. That's what I've done. I've used solids. I don't have a single print in this video, which is strange, but sometimes happens. <laughs> because this is a new pattern release. The Vienna jeggings will be 20% off for the first week. So in the description box of this video, you'll find all the information about what size I used, the fabrics, all of that, along with my affiliate link if you'd like to use it. If you do use that link to purchase, it doesn't cost you any extra, but part of that sale comes back to me as commission. And that's one way that you can support this channel without it costing you extra. So I really appreciate it always if you use my link. Thank you. The Vienna jeggings are designed for knit fabrics or some stretch wovens, but I put an asterisk on that. I'll touch on that in a sec. If it, when you're working with your knit fabrics, they need to be medium to heavy weight. You can't use lightweight knits for this. It's not going to work. You can't use fabrics that don't have great recovery like rayon spandex, modal spandex, bamboo, ITY. That is not going to work. You need medium to heavy weight fabric with at least 10% spandex in there. Cotton lycra, heavy cotton lycra is going to work. 
Ponty, if it stretches the right amount, double knits, scuba, athletic knits, those are the types that you want to use. And if you are fortunate to find yourself some cotton lycra with a denim look, then it's perfect because they will actually look like jeans without being the stiff denim that is uncomfortable to wear. You need your knit fabrics to stretch 30 to 50% horizontal, so nice stretch horizontal. And it's very, very, very important that your knit fabric stretches vertically. 20 to 30 percent so a tad less than horizontally but if your fabric doesn't stretch vertically these are not going to fit it's going to be super uncomfortable on the rise on the bottom everywhere you really need them to stretch horizontally and vertically i mentioned the stretch wovens because it's mentioned in the pattern that you could use a stretch denim super stretch denim or a bengaline or something like that but in my experience and in all the years I've been sewing, I've never found fabrics like that that stretch vertically. I have quite a few stretch wovens in my stash and I went to check all of them. And yeah, they stretch great horizontally. They have a lot of horizontal stretch, but zero vertical stretch. So if you ever find a stretch woven that also stretches vertically, maybe it could work, but I would say be very careful. I would rather not touch the stretch wovens. I just don't know how easy it could be to find one that stretches vertically. I've never seen one in my whole life, but they might exist and you might find one. It's just that I've never ever seen one. So I would recommend you stay with the medium to heavyweight knits for a great result, that you're not gonna have surprises along the way. Sizing is from zero to 30 US, so that is amazing. And the reason I'm a super big fan of Sinclair patterns is because there are height files. So you look at your height, you can choose a petite, a regular or a tall file. Choose that one first, and then you choose your size based on your full hip. You can blend if you have a larger waist or a smaller waist than the hip measurement. So you can print two or three sizes if you need to do that. And you always find really helpful diagrams in the instructions to show you how to do that, how to blend from one line to the other. In my case, I sew a straight size 16 with a tall file and have a great result. Now these are made with neat fabrics. There is a lot of negative ease here and you need this negative ease for the jeggings to fit correctly. If you're scared of negative ease, don't be. If you have fabric that stretches 30 to 50% horizontal and 20 to 30 vertical, you will have a good fit. These are meant to be fitted. Jeggings that fit loose don't look very good. So at the hips, you have almost four inches of negative ease, which might scare you. You might think, oh, these pattern pieces look really small if you're used to sewing woven pants. Don't be it'll be fine. There's about two and a half inches of negative ease at the waist also to keep it nice and fitted. Depending on your height file, you have an inseam anywhere from 27 inches to 32 inches. Now I know I've always said that fitting pants with negative ease and neat fabrics is not the same approach as sewing with woven pants. You can take your time and measure the front rise, the back rise, including the waistband, including the yoke. I have a really strict methodology that I do when I sew woven pants and I just throw that all out the window when I make pants like this because you cannot use your body measurements here because there's negative ease both horizontally and vertically so I would suggest making a muslin I made a muslin using heavy cotton lycra it's the type of fabric I use to make waistbands with yoga waistbands and I have quite a lot of it I made a short version above the knee just to check for the feet at the waist the hips the thighs I don't really need to check the feet all the way down to the bottom to save on fabric and then if these turned out super wearable I could just use them to go for a walk like bike shorts or something so here we go super easy to make it takes no time at all to whip them up when I'm making a muslin I don't do any single detail at all there's no pocket right here there's no fake fly on the front there's no yoke there's no pockets there's absolutely nothing and as I mentioned all these details like the yoke and all of that are just for looks they don't have anything to do with the fit by now it's erased but with a chalk I had marked where the yoke was going to be the pocket placement right there just to see if I like that as always I tend to sew my pockets as high as the yoke will let you I, I like a higher pocket placement so that was all I could only sew them three eighths of an inch higher but I was extremely happy with the feet on my muslin. I'll show you some pictures here from the front and from the back. So, so happy and so excited because I've been hoarding these fabrics for ages to make pants like this. The fabrics are expensive, they are pricey and I was not going to be experimenting with them and just cutting them out and hoping for the best. 
This fabric is not too precious for me. You know, I can easily find this and buy it here. They were made to check on the feet. It was a pattern test, so I had to do that anyway. <laughs> but I suggest you, you use a little piece of fabric. Maybe you have some remnant or something that is not gonna be good for anything, but it could be enough for you to make a really short pair just to check that you're happy with everything. You know, I think if you choose your height file correctly and your size, you're gonna have a really nice result. I didn't need to do any fitting adjustment whatsoever. It fits me perfectly. It's just like the pattern was made for me and that is amazing. Of course, I have some sewing footage for you in Up Close and So Personal. You're going to see how to sew the model panels, how to do the pin tucks, how to put the front legs together, the back legs together, all that fun stuff. It's very short compared to others because it's not complex. So let's see it. In the instructions you'll find exactly what measurements you need to cut out this rectangle from for the moto panels from the front leg for both of them to fit. After cutting that out I have drawn with chalk lines that are three quarters of an inch apart or two centimeters apart. It took a while but I <laughs> drew them all on. And now to sew these pin tucks you just put the fabric wrong sides together and fold at each of these lines. I'm using a presser foot that is helping me sew this at about an eighth of an inch. I think it helps a lot rather than just eyeballing it with a regular presser foot. So that is really handy and it's just really repetitive. You sew one straight seam after the next, after the next, after the next, until this whole rectangle has all the pin tucks there. After doing that, we can place the moto panel piece here and you can place it however you want. I've decided to place this on the bias just to have these pin tucks run diagonally along my leg. I think it looks nicer. You can see me placing that on the fabric. And I'm just gonna cut this out with my rotary cutter. The pin tucks are already there. It doesn't really make much of a difference. After I cut this out, I'm gonna cut the second piece mirrored to it. And I'm actually using this first piece that I've cut out as the pattern piece. I'm not using the paper anymore. And I've just flipped it over to have mirror images and that's how I get two pieces. Now I have quite a bit of fabric that has the pin tucks left over. I'm gonna keep that for something special, maybe on some other garment. And I have a little piece here that is going to be enough just to cut the fake pockets that go on the sides. They are optional. And because they fit on this little piece of fabric, I'm gonna go ahead and cut them out of this as well to have something a little extra decorative. And I'm also placing that on the bias. These are all the pattern pieces for the Vienna jeggings. I've chosen to make the one with all the details. So you can see that there are quite a few pieces, but it's not hard to put together. That is the back leg with the yoke right there. That's going to be the pocket that goes on the back, patch pocket. And here are the curved waistband pieces. There are two pairs, so there's four pieces in total. And then all that you see on this end is the front leg. You've already seen how I did my pin tucks to cut this panel right there. I had some left over, so I decided to cut that little fake pocket piece with the same pin tucks just to add something different. <laughs> Otherwise, this is just optional. It's just decorative. And there's this little end coming out of the center front because that's going to be the fake fly. That's the top part of the front leg united to that one. Then comes the knee patch that attaches to there and then to the bottom of the front leg. These jeggings are super easy to put together. I just decided to start on the back and I'm just uniting the yokes to the back leg. There are notches along there. It is a curved seam and I'm going to serge this directly using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. That is the seam allowance that this pattern has. It is a small seam allowance and I've tested my fabric to find the correct settings for my overlocker. The seam allowance of the yoke goes pressed down and then you need to top stitch that down. I'm doing that at an eighth of an inch with a shallow zigzag. I have a presser foot that is helping me sew with this seam allowance, which is super helpful. And I really want to top stitch with a shallow zigzag to allow this to stretch. It is horizontal along this area of the body. There is negative ease and I really want my yokes to stretch along with my body when I wear the garments. So you just repeat on the other back leg with a the yoke. Then you put the two backs together, align the back crotch curve, 
match that yoke seam of course so it looks nice now i'm doing an extra seam with the sewing machine also using a shallow zigzag and then i'm also going to serge it i just really want this back crotch curve to be a stronger seam it is a high stress area when you move when you sit down when you stand up and i never want this seam to rip so i'm doing the machine and the serger there to make it a stronger area and then you can press this to the side and also top stitch this seam Now we head over to the patch pockets. You can work on these first before putting them on the pants and you need to fold the top twice by half an inch. So I've got it pinned there and I'm also going to use a shallow zigzag to do this seam. And I also want this seam to be able to stretch as I put the garment on as I wear it. I really think the shallow zigzag helps and it does look like a straight stitch. You can't tell the difference. I'm putting my pockets about three eighths of an inch higher than the reference of the pattern. As high as the yoke allows actually. I can't put them on top of the yoke so it's quite close to the yoke there and I folded them in by a quarter of an inch I have hand basted these down so I don't have to deal with pins or anything moving and I am also top stitching this at an eighth of an inch I'm only doing one row because the seam allowance is small it is a quarter of an inch so if I want to do a second row at a quarter of an inch I think I might not hit the seam allowance underneath and just hit the fabric. So having these pockets hand basted is really easy. It makes top stitching them down a breeze. Now that all this is done, we can put our back legs aside and work on the front. First, I am attaching the fake pocket onto the top of the leg. It is fake. It's gonna look like there's a pocket there, but there is no pocket. It is curved and there is a notch there to help you match that. You can search that at a quarter of an inch seam allowance and then i took my time to pin all the pieces so i don't have to be pinning one by one by one and here i'm surging the top of the modal panel to the upper leg right there after that surged i move on and sew the bottom of the modal panel to the top of the knee pad which is another little pattern piece there and then there's another seam that unites the bottom of the knee pad to the upper portion of the lower leg piece right there quite a lot of little horizontal seams to make one leg they are curved seams and they all have notches to help you match everything up i am going to top stitch these all the same way with just an eighth of an inch seam allowance starting with a curved pocket and moving all the way down to the leg here we can see what one front leg looks like we repeat the same with the other one once both legs are done, we can put them right sides together and I am opting to sew the fake fly. You don't have to do that, that is optional. I have drawn the seam allowance of the front crotch curve there in red, as you can see. And I am going to sew that with a shallow zigzag. You can see that that's done, that was quite fast. And now I'm carefully going to serge this curved area and then press it to one side, the side that you choose. We can edge stitch this front crotch curve at an eighth of an inch like the rest of the jeggings. And then we can top stitch that fake fly down with one or two rows following the curve. And then I'm using the edge of the presser foot to sew the second row about a quarter of an inch away from the other and that completes it. Now we have the front legs done. You can see them on the table. We can take the back and just put them right sides together. Now, if you want to top stitch the inseam of your jeggings, sew your inseams first. So you can serge them and then top stitch them and then you can sew the side seams and then put on the curved waistband. These are my official leggings. Look, I'll show you the fabric up close. Maybe you'll be able to see it, how much it looks like denim. It looks just like denim and on the inside also but look look at how this stretches horizontally and vertically it's super nice fabric i use this to put accents on other patterns you've probably seen this fabric in the past on plackets and cuffs and yoga waistbands and all that but i'd never actually made a whole garment out of this fabric that's what the fabric was bought and i just kept cutting little pieces out of it but i have these they're so nice this is a curved waistband I choose not to put elastic inside on the top. I don't need it to hold my waistband up. I feel that the curve between my waist and my hips is enough to keep anything up. Like nothing's gonna come down because my hips stop that from happening. <laughs> so I just find the elastic in there a little uncomfortable. So I, if I don't need it for functionality, I'd rather just not sew it. I do have the fake fly as you saw me sew. I did all the top stitching with navy because 
I think when you do top stitching in the same color, it looks a little bit more dressy. If you do it in a tan color or a contrast, it just looks more sporty. And I try to keep my clothes looking a little bit more dressy if I can. This is the fake pocket on the front that I was able to cut out from my pin tuck fabric because I had enough. I think it looks really cute. I love that and I'm so glad I had some of that fabric left over. And then comes the moto patch with the knee pad right there. It's all top stitched. And then it goes straight down and there's a normal hem folded up by half an inch twice. And I use the shallow zigzag as I did everywhere so that I know I have horizontal stretch. You are going to put your foot in there, so it is a high stress area when you put your jeggings on because your foot goes in through there. So you don't want to do this with a straight stitch. At the back, there is a crotch and there is a yoke. My pocket is almost touching the yoke. I put them as high as they would go for what I wanted. It takes a little while to sew the patch pockets. I, it took me a little while at least because I like to hand baste everything to make sure it's really, really going to be accurate. So on the inside, it looks like this. Lots of seams, as you can see. But remember, they are just decorative. They don't affect the feet. You can make the leg normal and it'll fit the same. There's a fake fly right there, the fake pockets, the yoke, all of the things. Super fun to make. Found the two ways, one that is more for hot weather, one that is more for cold weather. Let's see. Here are my Vienna jeggings in a size 16 tall file. This is a cotton lycra that looks like denim. It really does look like denim but it's not a woven, it's a knit, and it's got great horizontal and vertical stretch, perfect for this project. And it's the only way I would wear something that looks like jeans that is really nice and fitted down the leg because I don't feel constricted, I don't feel that it's tight around my calves or my ankle, super comfortable. I decided to go all in and do all the details for this one. I'll show you up closer. I've chosen to do the curved waistband, which is wider, and I find it's much more comfortable for me. I think the rise is perfect here. And at the back, you can see the feet, the yoke, the patch pockets, very, very comfortable. Down lower, I'm showing you how it looks like in a little bit more detail. It's always hard to show bottoms. I did do the moto panel, and did some pin tucks on a piece of fabric for that you can see the details there on the front leg I think it's really cool I think I would only do this if I was working with a solid if I was doing this with a printed knit I would not do the moto panel and the knee patches you just wouldn't see them so you can make this as detailed as you want or as simple as you want the options are there and I just really love the feet and the look I've just paired it with a ready-to-wear top that is slightly longer than others I have I would always try to cover my bottom with tightly fitted garments like this is just my style and how I feel more comfortable. These are the same jeggings, just styled in a different way. I've got one of my Skyla hoodies. I think it goes great with these jeggings. I've got navy blue booties that I think go perfect underneath the jeggings. So just another option, you know, I could wear this all year round really. It just depends on what I pair with it on the top and the type of shoes I use. So this is just another way that I've styled it. I wanted to make a second pair that was going to be all the same with a small little change and when we sew we can do these little things we can customize so I was happy with the feet everywhere but from the knee down I wanted a pair that wasn't going to hug my calves and my ankles I wanted a little wider I'll show you a little diagram here what I did you'll find that notch that marks where the knees are so from there I just drew a straight line down to the bottom of the hem and added an inch on the side seam and on the inseam the same amount on both sides for the front and the back legs and it just gives me a bit of more space there at the bottom without it looking really fitted all the way down so it's another alternative that is not official it's not in the pattern but totally doable if you are on my patreon page and have access to extra content that i make i did explain all this in a little more detail over there with the pattern pieces and how i got to those measurements i'm so happy this fabric oh my gosh this fabric is so good so high quality so what i did here because the fabric is so high quality and i had a little bit left I cut my inner waistband with cotton lycra. No one's gonna see it, 
I just wanted to use less of the good fabric so only the outer waistband is cut from this fabric. I have the fly, you know, it's gonna look very similar to the other pair. <laughs> I have the fake pocket top stitched but then my leg is just plain, it doesn't have the moto patch, nothing like that, it's just very plain. And at the back, of course, I have the yoke and the pockets. I do like these details, especially on a solid. I wouldn't want to wear pants, I have nothing on the back. I think this always looks really nice. If this was a print, then I wouldn't really care. But look, the front one is the jeggings as per the pattern and the other one is the one that's slightly modified. So it's not a huge difference. It's not like these are flared or wide leg or anything like that. It's just that they have a little bit extra. They still look like fitted pants. They still look like fitted jeans. It's just that little change and I really, really wanted that change. Now this fabric, I bought it the last time I went to Chile before the pandemic. And it's so good, like it's so quality. It's much heavier than the other one. It's just so nice. And it looks just like jeans, but it's not. <laughs> it feels like pajamas. So let's see this one on as well. I've got it paired with this blouse because I really like it. This is my second pair of Vienna jeggings. Also in a really heavy cotton lycra that looks like denim with great stretch horizontal and vertically. This one is actually heavier weight and more compressive than the previous pair that I used to make the jeggings. Up closer you can see I've got the same curved waistband, super comfortable, I've got the fake pocket there, just simple, I've got a fake front fly that no one can see. Very similar to the jeggings, this one, these ones are more simple, they don't have the moto patch or anything. And at the back I have the same yoke and the patch pockets, all the same. Really like this pair and I'm glad I was able to whip these up too. They are similar but they are different. And the only difference with this one is that I added one inch extra to both the inseam and the side seam. To make it more of a straight leg fit, it's not straight leg, it's not wide, but it's not really fitted at the ankles like the other one was. It keeps the same fit at the top, on the thighs, everything is exactly the same up to the knee. It only goes slightly wider from the knee down if you want to have another option that is not an official option, but totally possible because when we sew, we can do things like this. So I'd wanted pants like this for such a long time. I just really wanted comfy pants that were gonna fit me correctly. And that's why I saved this fabric so for so many years. I have the same type of fabric in black. I'm gonna go ahead and make another pair. I know I'm gonna wear these all the time. They're so, so comfortable. They have a lot of details. They look like jeans. So this is a type of fitted pant I would wear and I would be very, very happy to style and incorporate into my life because this is the first pair I have. So comfortable, really enjoyed it. Remember the Vienna jeggings are 20% off for the first week. I will leave all the details down below with my affiliate link if you'd like to use it. And I will see you again very soon with more sewing. Bye.